G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I wanna show you how you can permanently loosen tight quads. But as I'm going through in each one of these videos in this series, is that it's not enough to show you how to stretch and loosen a tight quad if we don't also have a broader conversation of why that tightness exists in the first place. Because if you find the best quadricep stretch, and we'll go through one or two variations that you can try in this video, and that's all that you do, then you aren't addressing the underlying cause of why your brain has asked that part of your body to be tight in the first place. And you may never get to the stage where you don't have to keep stretching stretching your quadricep muscles forever. We're also gonna talk about the role of hidden spinal dysfunction in prompting your quadricep muscles to be tight. And then like any muscular tightness, we also wanna show you a strength exercise that can help you fatigue that tissue through range so that we can essentially replace tightness with strength and function. And then at the end of the video, as I've been trying to do with each one of these permanently loosened videos, is I wanna have a broad conversation about why all of this might be here. And the one thing that you have to consider changing if you genuinely wanna create an environment that will allow this to be loose forever. So let's get into it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to establish a baseline of how tight your quads feel to begin with. We want you to have an immediate ability to compare to see if something's actually physically changed immediately. Because we are talking about the quads today, we don't have to overcomplicate it too much. We can just do something as simple as a side lying or a standing quadricep stretch. And what we're looking at here is we want to see obviously how close you can get your heel to your bottom. And if you find it hard to immediately grab your heel or grab your ankle to begin with, you're welcome to wrap a towel around it, grab onto that towel, just to see how far back you feel you can go. Ultimately, it doesn't matter how far you go because we want to establish that baseline and see if we can improve upon that with the techniques that we're about to go through. But from here, not only do we want to get your heel as close to your bottom as possible, but we also want to try and pull your knee back at the very least in line with your hips and trunk, if not a little bit past that as well. So first time round, take note of obviously how far you feel you can go, but also how it feels to do. Where do you feel your tightness? How bad is that tightness? How does it compare when we're doing sort of right versus left? For me, my left side, the first side feels a little bit tighter than this side. And it's important to understand that because that may start to hold some clues as to where in your lower back you might need to look for the things that might be prompting that quadricep to be tighter than the other side in the first place. But again, take note of how that felt and how far you went. And let's go looking for that hidden spinal dysfunction first. So if you've been following the videos that have been putting out of late, each one of these permanently loosened videos potentially has some spinal connection involved. So if you can take that mindset with this, if you can grab a foam roller or a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball, whatever you have lying around the house is fine. But what we're looking for is we wanna go hunting through the base of your rib cage down towards the base of your spine at the top of your pelvis. The reason for this is there's a whole bunch of neural connections that exist in that part of your spine that when dysfunctional in their own right can prompt the things that they associate with, connect to, pass through to also become dysfunctional. So again, how that looks, you wanna place the roller at about the level of the base of your rib cage to start with, looking for things that feel stiffer, tighter, thicker, harder, rustier, especially when compared to the other side. So for me, as I just gently move it up and down, I've found a spot here that feels a bit stiff. Again, I don't wanna roll over this as the exercise, but I just wanna try and just gently recline over the top of that. And for me, I wanna just gently roll to the left-hand side, which again, coincidentally or otherwise, feels stiffer and tighter for me, and then roll across to the other side on the right-hand side for me and compare. Now, once you've found the segment or a segment and the side that feels the stiffest, the tightest, the thickest, the hardest, we just wanna get you to relax here and let that tissue accommodate. You can take a couple of deep breaths. You can squeeze the muscular tissue over the top to do whatever you can to prompt that section of your spine to release. And then once you've done that, you've spent 30 seconds or a minute on that level, you can very gently move the roller down a little bit and then down a little bit and then consistently go hunting all the way up and down, looking for things that feel stiffer, tighter and more restricted. Again, you may not have any overt observable back pain or even tenderness when you use the roller. Respectfully, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for that sense of restriction because what can happen is as soon as you've found some of those stiff segments of your back and you've managed to feel like they've released or mobilized with a ball or a roller, you can immediately come back to your quad stretch. Again, you do this in standing, automatically it feels that little bit easier to get my heel towards my bottom. And then when I pull my 
thigh back. I don't feel the same amount of tightness. I feel like I can go further back without cheating and, and bending my back. And then immediately gauge as to whether that feels different to you. So please have a go at that yourself. And again, let me know in the comments below what impact it had for you, if any at all. Because once you have found some of that hidden spinal dysfunction that you may not have realized was there, and you've hopefully found a technique that helps you free up that tissue relatively quickly, we obviously now need to give you a muscular stretch for those quads to clear up any of the consequences of that quadriceps area tightening. So as I alluded to at the top of this video, the baseline test is eerily similar to the type of stretching that we're going to do. But the only difference is there's a specific technique that I want you to add to this sideline quadriceps stretch or standing quadriceps stretch to make it instantly more effective. So essentially how it looks is again coming back down into your preferred lying or standing position. Now traditional stretching dictates that you should be holding this for 15 seconds, 30 seconds and hoping for the best. But again clinically that's not good enough anymore. What you should do instead is wherever you feel that tightness find a way to tense up that tightness either by squeezing your bottom, tensing your thigh or pushing your foot back into your hand without losing the position of the stretch. Do what you can to tense up that tissue for five to 10 seconds because what should happen is if you maintain that same position and then relax it creates a reflex in your brain that physically releases some of that tissue and what you should find is again straight away you should be able to take that leg further back before you find that same level of tightness repeat the same thing again tense it up push against your hand squeeze your butt squeeze your thigh for five to ten seconds relax let your tissue give then go further and further back and if you can keep playing with that over the course of two to three minutes until you get sick of it or you stop making change but if you find that that version of your quad stretch either lying down or standing is too easy for you then let's progress this to the couch stretch to really scale the hardness of that stretch up so if you're looking for a harder version of a simple quad stretch try the couch stretch the couch stretch is an amazing and particularly potentially quite advanced version of a quadriceps stretch. And all it requires you to do is to take the leg that you're trying to mobilize, we're gonna place the knee back into the corner of something and have your other leg up into this high kneeling position. What we're doing from here is keeping everything in line, keeping your back straight. We want you to extend up through your hips, trying to be as vertical as you can. Again, we're looking for tightness at the front of your thigh, front of your hip. If you can find that before you get here, that's perfectly fine. Now, obviously this is quite an advanced position. You're more than welcome to do this on a chair. It just asks less of you as a human being. Whichever version feels the most comfortable to you, find the level that you feel you can work at. If it's here, that's fine. If it's all the way up here, that's also fine. Same thing again, wherever it feels tight, try and squeeze and tense everything. Again, you might need to push your foot back into the wall to really make that tissue work. After five to ten seconds, when you give, it'll give a little bit. And you should be able to get that little bit further into the stretch than you could before. Go hunting around for it and keep repeating that process again until you either stop making change or you've had enough. And once you've done that, we then need to add some strength into the conversation to try and replace some of that tightness with muscular strength and support. So once you've mobilized your spine and found an effective way to stretch out those quads, we want to add a little bit of fatigue and strength to the mix to decrease the risk that your body's going to rely on tightening that muscle as opposed to just using the strength that's available to it. And two very simple ways to fatigue quadricep muscles are with some squats or doing a a lunge. The benefit of these two exercises is they're both functional exercises in the sense that there's a lot of opportunities to get into this squat shape a lot throughout the day and this lunge shape is often very reflective of walking up and down stairs, going up and down hills. So obviously if you wanted to specifically target that quad in isolation, simple exercises like knee extensions might be beneficial for you. But I like squats because they not only retrain and strengthen your quads, but they do so in the context of using your entire leg and trunk at the same time and for me the blueprint for a perfect squat dictates that with your feet straight about shoulder width apart we want you to try and imagine that keeping your big toes on the ground that you're gently rotating your legs outwards you're screwing your knees outwards what you should feel is you should feel the arches of your feet will lift up but you should also feel the musculature in your hips will also tension as well all this does is it creates a stable platform for you to bend your hips, knees and ankles within. And what should happen is if you have the requisite flexibility to get all the way down to the bottom position of a squat, then you shouldn't feel that as you come down, 
that your feet want to turn out. You shouldn't feel that your knees want to cave in. You shouldn't feel like your heels want to lift up or that you want to really lean forward or fall backwards as a consequence. If you do experience any of those things, stop before you get to that range. Work within the range that you have. Go looking for that fatigue through sets of eight, 10 to 12, standard strength protocols. If you find that the regular squat does feel too easy, you're welcome to grab a weight, get a backpack, put some heavy books or something into it. So by the time you get to that sort of 10 to 12th rep, you do start to feel some genuine fatigue through those quads and potentially through your hips as well. And when looking at a lunge, we can take the same approach where you wanna have your foot straight, Ideally, you wanna be as wide apart as you can. We wanna get you to think about dropping down and then coming back up again. Again, the goal is to make sure that your feet are straight, that you can maintain that rotation outwards as you lower your back leg to the ground and then coming back up again. If you feel your foot turns out, if you feel your knee caves in, if you feel like you're unstable, hold on to something. Just make sure you're concentrating on working the muscles at the front and also the back to experience that fatigue. One of the main reasons why I like a lunge as well is that not only are we strengthening the tissue through the front leg, but the further back you have your back leg, the more lengthening and the more strength you're gonna be asking of those quads at the front as well. And if you can pair that fatigue up with a better understanding of how to mobilize your back and those tight quads, then all of that may still be for nothing until we take a look at this next idea. So once you've taken the time to free up any of that hidden spinal dysfunction and you've found a suitable quad stretch that makes you instantly feel looser through the front of your thighs, the final piece of the puzzle that we need to discuss is why are we here in the first place? If you have found that a very specific segment of your back holds the keys to freeing up your quads, then there has to be a reason why that exact part of your spine, potentially on one side more than the other, has become stiff, tight, and restricted. And again, if you've been following these videos, you'll know how important the role of your day-to-day -day spinal shapes and postures might be. And for me clinically as a physiotherapist, what I've come to understand for most people is it isn't necessarily the spinal shapes that you get into doing the active, interesting things like going to the gym, lifting weights, moving throughout your environments. It often tends to be the more stationary, sedentary shapes that accumulate dysfunction over time. So for example, if you found that this exact part of your spine was the stiffest, the tightest, the most tender, and when you release that a little bit, your quad released with it, then it's very likely that that might be the part of your back that you're unknowingly hinging through without realizing it. And again, clinically, that can be someone who sits at a desk all day, sits back into their chair while they're driving, sits into their couch watching TV, using a laptop, using your phone. It can be someone who sits and leans forward a lot, whether you play an instrument or you do arts and crafts. It can even be someone who stands and leans forward a lot, whether you're a clinician or whether you're a chef or a cook in some way. It doesn't matter what you're doing with your spine, but it absolutely matters the position that you're doing that in for the hours, days, weeks, months, and years you're doing it for. And as I said before, if you're taking the time to stretch those tight quads and free up some stiffness in your back that maybe takes the handbrake off from above, then you will always have to keep doing that in theory unless we can also pair that up with an environmental change that involves the positions and the function of your spine. Because if you're consistently kicking a hinge into your spine and then having to deal with the consequences that might be over here, then obviously taking the hinge out of your back again, supporting yourself with a pillow or a cushion, bring up your hips so you don't have to bend through your back as much you can take that load through your hips however it works for you we just want to take some action to make sure that we can start to change the way that you load up your spine so that we can get to the stage where you've permanently loosened your tight quads so as always i genuinely hope that that was insightful and above all else i hope that it was helpful let me know in the comments down below how your quads felt after doing each one of those exercises. Please consider leaving a like on the video if you did enjoy this. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more of this type of content. But as always, I genuinely hope that that was helpful and I'll see you next time.